So the other day we focused on using Excel to build a scatter plot and draw a line of best fit whose slope was beta. Today we're going to extend that in terms of using beta in the capital asset pricing model, also known as CAPM, to plot, as the text calls it, the security market line. So we start off by making a few assumptions. So let's use the historical risk-free rate of return of 4%, and let's use the historical rate of return in the market for common stocks of 11.6%. As a reminder, our capital asset pricing model formula is expected return is equal to risk-free plus beta times the quantity returned to the market minus risk-free. Now over here, I'm going to show once and only once, and I'm not going to to find this in class again, how to get around the tricky little problem of when you try to do expected return, you get that silly little registered trademark symbol. So here's how you have to do it. Ready? So you type in your E, your parentheses, your R, and your parentheses. Then you have to hit spacebar, control Z, and enter, and that will go ahead and eliminate the problem of the registered trademark. So down below, let's go ahead and construct a basic table where we will look at the relationship between the X variable, risk, as measured by beta, and the Y variable, returns, as indicated by what the capital asset pricing model suggests. So first and foremost, using what we have above, what we can see is that the risk-free rate of return should be our historic 4% and the market rate of return for common stocks should be as per above the 11.6. Now let's go ahead and use our capital asset pricing model to calculate the expected returns for two different projects with betas of 0.6 and 1.3. So we use our formula of equals the risk-free rate of return plus beta, don't forget your multiplication sign, times the difference between market returns, I'm going to hit F4 there, and the risk-free rate of return, hit F4 again, and then this way I should be able to copy and paste this without any difficulty. Let's F4 that first risk-free as well. So our expected return of a project with a beta of 0.6 should be 8.6%. What about a project with a beta of 1.3 well, the expected return should be about 1.3. Now I'm going to go ahead and use that information to plot the security market line. So again, we will use some basic Excel graphing features. So I highlight my data. I'm going to use a scatter plot again. So Alt and D. But this time I'm going to have it automatically draw in for me a line with smooth markers. So now let's go ahead and customize this graph a little bit. Let's add some data labels. Let's customize those data labels so that when we format those data labels, they'll show us both the X and Y values. And let's have those be shown above our line. So this is our basic security market line. In order to make it look even better, let's add a few chart elements, which let's add some axis titles. So the axis title down here would be risk as measured by beta. And then our axis title for the Y would be our expected returns. Somehow I lost that in there, so we'll just add it again. Axis titles, primary vertical, let's call that expected returns. Okay, now we have our basic then, as it's entitled, the SML or security market line. So now let's see how we use this. So what we want to do is say, this line represents the returns that we would consider to be fair given the risk. Anything beneath that would be unfavorable. You wouldn't want to take on a project that had market risk or a beta of 1 and only predict 2%. But you certainly would want to take on a project that had a rate of, say, 0.4 of a beta 
and offered something like 16%. So let's pretend that we went ahead and off to the side, had done a couple of our analyses, and had evaluated two projects and found that a project with an IRR of 0.6 came up with a beta of 13. FYI, I just made that up right now, but it is something that we know how to calculate. And then let's predict that we went ahead and evaluated a project with a beta of 1.3, and it came back with a return of 0.10. So now let's plot those two additional points onto our graph and see where they fit above or below the line. So I'm going to right mouse click here, and we are going to select some more data. We're going to add a new data series. This one will go ahead and we'll call project number one, which has then a beta of 0.6 and an IRR of 13. Be careful when you're working in graphing, sometimes Excel throws a little extra in there. So we'll put that on there. And then let's add the second one as well, which we'll call project two, that is going to have a beta of 1.3 and an IRR of 0.1. So let's look at our graph right now and we see those points. Let's make it even more informative for us by adding some data labels there. Let's customize those data labels again by formatting them. And this time let's have the series name and the X and Y so that we can see that project one has a 0.6 and a 0.13 expected, uh, pardon me, IRR versus its expected return of 8.6, so clearly above the line. Let's go ahead and make it the same color as the IRR box over there. So let's go ahead and we can select our fill here and let's make it that same blue color. And then over here, we're gonna do the same in terms of we're gonna add a data label. We'll customize that data label by formatting it. This time again, we want the series name and the X and Y values to appear on there. We can see it is now clearly below the line. And when we, let's move this out of the way so we can see a little bit better. Let's go ahead and customize this fill to make it match that color. And now I'm gonna actually change the color of this line. It's bothering me that uh, the line has a funny color to it. So, well, it's not funny. It's just, it doesn't look right compared to the other things. So we'll make it a little bit orange. So now we have the security market line showing us that, well, apparently his name was Rick. Let's change it properly to risk. That risk on the X axis as measured by beta has an expected set of returns that fall along this line. Project one has a superior IRR than beta, so we'd be happy with that project. And project number two has an inferior IRR when compared to the beta, so that's a project that we would reject. So given those skills and putting them together, why don't you try to go ahead and construct this yourself so that you can see the relationship between the security market line and our expected returns and IRRs so that we get a nice little output that looks like that.